Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us and um, much appreciation for folks that are able to be here on the in the Zoom room as well. It's sweet to see you and um, share practice. Hmm. So it's, it's been interesting lately. Hmm. There's been a couple of conversations around time that have come up and some folks uh, close to me feeling like uh, time is really dragging, <laughs> really wanting the whole holiday season to be over. And, and uh, when there's a lot of heart pain, uh, time can move painfully slow. And other folks sharing the, the sense of kind of frantic time and time moving too quickly and not enough time and um, because of the holiday season, perhaps, or whatever else is happening in your life when you're um, listening to, and sharing this practice with us, that um, I think we've all experienced this at different times of not a sense of not enough time or a sense of... Uh, Time really dragging and going very slowly. Um, and in uh, Matthew Ricard's book on happiness, that uh, I'll put the link down below for that. And it's uh, a book I've been referencing a lot lately because we've been practicing with it in another group. Um, he has a short chapter on what he's calling golden time which is a very evocative and sweet image, uh, or, or I find it that way, and I may it be so for you, I hope, as well. Golden time and uh, how time could resemble, we could have the image of like a fine gold powder. And those of us that have... Um, practice meditation and particularly um, paying attention to impermanence, you might really have a felt experience of time like this. I, I uh, often think of, wish I had one, I think I'll probably get one someday. <laughs> you maybe have seen them, These, it's like a, a frame with two pieces of glass and then really fine sand in between those, in be between those two frames. Uh, and as you move it or roll it, it's like an hourglass, the colored sand just falls and rolls through the frame. It, an hourglass gives you the same feeling as well. Of I picture like a cliff kind of, and the sand is just constantly flowing off the edge. And time is like that, it's just constantly flowing by um, so quickly. Just since this recording started, this practice, this time together, so much time has passed. <laughs> it's just flowing by, breath by breath, word by word, moment by moment. And when we're distracted, when we're heedless, not paying attention, that golden powder can just be slipping through our fingers without knowing, without awareness. Um, I love this description uh, that he shares of, um, it's just said so perfectly. So the opposite of time just passing by without awareness is um, that we are called to put time to good use. He, he describes it as the shuttle we pass through the weft of our days to weave the fabric of a meaningful life. Oh God. I'll say it again. It's the shuttle that we pass through the weft 
of our days, W-E-F-T, to weave the fabric of a meaningful life. So um, I recently did a little, took participated in a little class on weaving. And uh, the weft is, uh, if you have a frame that's open, the, there are strands going in one direction, up and down, we'll say. You could turn it the other way, but that becomes the weft through which you weave in and out, back and forth, the weaving that becomes the image. And so, and and the 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 shuttle would be attached to, if you're using wool, we'll say, um, it, it's the shuttle is what moves through those strands, those wefts. The beautiful image. So to put time to good use, it's the shuttle we pass through the weft of our days and weave the fabric of a meaningful life. And I don't know that I've really contemplated and reflected at times I have, but not so intentionally as recently, um, about paying attention to time as a, a, a really powerful tool for awakening. Um, yeah, and so just having this phrase golden time flowing through my day wakes me up to slowing down wakes me up to paying attention, wakes me up to gratitude, presence, etc. Golden time is so precious and it's so fleeting. <laughs> like we can't even really conceive how, how quickly it's passing. Um, most of the time we can't anyways. Uh, and so when we're not paying attention to this golden time, uh, minutes, which become hours, which becomes days, years, are so easily frittered away. And we're like, where did the time go? <laughs> um, just happens really easily. And so we'll talk a bit more about what helps us to awaken to the preciousness of this opportunity that we have to be conscious, embodied, awake beings. Um, and if we if we really turn to this quality, this this experience of the passage of time, it can very much help us uh, awaken. So uh, so to notice how often does it feel like time's going too slowly or it's dragging? Um, and and he's, he's kind of uh, referring to, he, well, he calls it a dreadful expression of killing time. He's like, oh, don't say that, killing time. It's like, oh my gosh. It it already is of the nature to be flowing by and to bring this kind of hostile feeling to the passing moments is uh, is painful. But of course, it's coming from a place of pain. He, uh, he says that time becomes a long, flat, dreary line, leaden, heavy, and uh, and is very mm, crippling to anyone who mm, finds waiting intolerable or delay or um, solitude or setbacks. Um, and this can this this sense of killing time can just arise when things are painful or we're not awake and engaged in what's really happening, but we're in a, a mind state that is mm, dreading future. Uh, 
but it can also take over a whole life where people are waiting to die and really just counting the days and dreading dreading life um and he um he talks about how um when we're in this uh suffering it dis it disguises it covers up um, the our awareness of the potential that we that is within us when we're in a painful state like that we're unaware of the potential that all of us has to develop and cultivate peace and wisdom and connectedness um He gives a few more specifics where he talks about boredom as um, one of these, a symptom really of um, a, an unawareness of golden time. And uh, so for folks that really rely on distraction and uh, how life is a series of entertainments <laughs> that, uh, any gap in in that consumption of entertainment and delights and distractions um, is experienced as boredom. And so if we notice ourselves saying this is boring, Maybe it's our meditation practice we think is boring or paying attention to the breath is boring or not being entertained in any given moment. And just notice if feeling bored arises and then ask ourselves, am I really paying attention? Am I really awake? This breath just passed by. What sounds, what sights, what sensations? what other beings are nearby or can I feel a sense of connection to? Uh, so to look out for boredom as, um, yeah, ways that we're missing the simple clarity of present moment. And then he also talks about loneliness, which is interesting. Um, the sense of feeling cut off from other beings. Um, we can feel alone in the middle of a crowd. We can be surrounded by people and still feel isolated and alone. And the Dharma and our practice cultivates and teaches and reminds us the true nature of our interconnectedness. And so when, when we're uh, feeling lonely, perhaps even lonely in a crowd, uh, this is a denial of reality that um, Even uh, as he describes a, a practice like someone who's a, a hermit or a rec recluse um, practicing in a cave in the Himalayan mountains for years, uh, sometimes, um, doesn't feel alone. They feel actually immense harmony and interconnectedness with all beings. And so to notice if there's times of feeling lonely and ask, am I really paying attention? Am I mm, ruminating on, on something? Uh, and am I really paying attention to the true nature of how things are, that we are all infinitely 
interconnected. Um, and to look at distraction, how it's similar to uh, what I was saying about boredom, but uh, to see how what happens in what we might find ourselves calling idle moments. I know for me, it's an ongoing addiction with the phone and distracting myself with, you know, whatever, something filling the time, even driving and just watching how a moment of, it's actually a moment of peace, but um, how habitual it is to reach for the radio and, and just starting to notice, oh, my hands actually just sometimes just reach for it without even a cognitive decision. Hmm, I'd like to update on what's happening in the news right now. Uh, it's just a ha habitual reflex to mm, distract. So notice if that's happening for you and uh, if it's skillful and conducive to... Uh, onward leading awareness um if we're experiencing time as something painful either too slow or too fast <laughs> that you know that um we feel like we're just passing the time or yeah, I'm just wasting time, killing time, or time's going too fast. This is um, a, a painful state. And um, it's a sign that we're unaware of our own potential in every moment to be peaceful, to be free of that suffering of wanting things to be faster or slower. Okay, so um, uh, golden time then, golden time, I just love that image, um, he describes this way, is when we can create, build, mm, devote ourselves to the welfare of others. Um where we're able to pause and look clearly within ourselves and see what's here, how are things. Um, appreciation for present moment is golden time. And the cultivation of the inner qualities that permit us, that help us Permit us to be better at helping others. These are qualities of golden time. Even in act inactivity, even if there's nothing happening or doing or building, accomplishing, creating, there is still a creativity in awake awareness. That's one of the qualities of it. Yeah. Um, and so there's some parts of our of the Dharma, of our practices that can help us really develop awareness of golden time, of the preciousness of time. And the first one is perhaps quite obviously mindfulness. <laughs> This can be the mindfulness of pauses throughout our day, just stopping, pausing, could be a breath even, one breath in awake awareness shifts everything. So it could be as simple as a few breaths, a few minutes, moments, pausing. Hmm. And mindfulness also of our meditation practice. 
So throughout the day, just reminding ourselves, oh, golden time right now. Um, but also these practices of stillness and cultivating our inner qualities and inner relationship will help us to awaken to the preciousness through our days. Another quality that helps us cultivate presence in golden time is intention, wise intention. So there, before mindfulness comes intention. And so we, we need to touch wh what, is this something that's helpful for me? And have an intention to cultivate it and look for it and build in pauses and build in Sangha community together, build in meditation practice so that we can develop it. It also requires something called aditana, determination. And this is a very skillful Dharma quality that uh, brings a lot of energy and determination is required mm, because of the intense uh, <laughs> marketing <laughs> uh, of distraction, the um, intensity of stimulation that's that's highly programmed and and uh, devised to distract us. And it, so it requires a lot of uh, intention and determination to pause, slow down. And you, mm, we can find that you can accomplish just as much, you're doing just as much, moving through your day in the same way, but the inner quality of presence and peace and wisdom is 100% shifted just by the intention, the inner quality of stillness and slowness that, um, how, that we meet each moment with. Renunciation is another very important quality to help us with this practice of awakening to golden time, renunciation of distractions. Um, so I have a an altar for my phone. I try to make it kind of a, it's just like a separate little, small little table with a salt lamp on it and that, uh, you know, and there's a place to charge it there. So that's convenient as well. Um, to be intentional around putting it down and um, kind of make it, hmm, what's the word? Uh, sacred. The, the, the phone isn't sacred, but the intention of putting it down is. <laughs> so you might make a, an altar for your phone to rest if you find that it's a strong distraction for you. And um, lastly, embodied awareness, mindfulness of body, the first foundation of mindfulness, the largest mm, sphere of practices are mindfulness of body practices, which include the breath, um awakening to our sense doors you know what what sounds are happening right now what sensations are happening are there smells or tastes And what sights? So just these pauses and just check in with each of the sense doors or just an open awareness. 
embodied time shifts. When we're in the present moment, it's still flowing as it does, but we're not fighting against its nature. We're not trying to slow it down or speed it up. It almost becomes timeless when we're in the present moment. Uh, there was another description that was helpful. Oh, yeah, here. I think this was it. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess it was this. Yeah. Time becomes pure awareness. Oh, so good. Like a new like a luminous stream of melted gold. Isn't that beautiful. Instead of feeling this rushing by, it just almost it's that almost timeless quality of Awake awareness is this luminous stream of melted gold. Very beautiful images. Hmm. Ah, so notice if it feels to you as if uh, time is uh, too slow or too fast and, and see if anything here is helpful for you in practicing with golden time, reminders through the day, and see if your relationship to what may be a busy time for you or maybe not busy enough. <laughs> um, you know, for some folks, this is a very painful time and time is moving very slowly. Um, so either can be true for all of us at different times. Hmm, I think that's it. Okay, so let's have a practice with this to cultivate this inner freedom, inner presence, um, and our relationship with time. So adjust any supports you need in your space. Um, adjust your lighting, if you like, or your temperature, if you need a wrap or anything. Mm. Water. <clears throat> mm. So once you've settled into your posture, inviting this sense of landing like the fine gold sand in an hourglass that may feel like it's all full in, in the area of the head. And as you come into stillness, this sense of gathering in and resting down, grain by grain, moment by moment. sensation of landing, settling, letting the shoulders rest, face, the hands, the bones, The jaw, and then we'll have these next few moments in silence together, just landing, resting like grains of golden sand in an hourglass, settling further and further with each passing moment.
And as you feel a little more present, landed, relaxed, take some time to reflect on wise intention. Perhaps the intention to weave this fabric of a meaningful life with awareness of time. Intention to awaken, intention to cultivate interconnectedness. See what's here for you. And then feeling these intentions, these wise intentions, fueling, inspiring your determination, energizing your aditana, your determination to awaken, awaken. What does that feel like in a, as a sensation in the body? Determination, wise intention, mindfulness. Reminding ourselves that we all have within us great potential for inner freedom. And then you could choose an anchor. You could use the breath or if there's sounds in your environment, sounds could be a helpful anchor. And see if you can awaken to the golden time of each of these moments, sound arising, passing, breath arising, passing.
when distraction arises, gently noticing and beginning again. And if you feel some stability with your anchor, you can just check out what it feels like to really rest in pure awareness. In its nature, this luminous stream of melted gold Resting in awake awareness. Everything being of its nature, arising and passing. And awake awareness is present and timeless. Nowness being known as clear, pristine, awake, fresh, golden.
embodied present moment. Noticing if the mind wants to pull into future or past and gently beginning again here and now. If there's any boredom or a sense of time moving too slowly, perhaps float the question, am I really awake?
Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes quickly and opportunity is lost. Let us awaken. Awaken. I will not squander my life. And if you like, you can join me in saying that gata aloud that I just said. I'll say it slowly and you can kind of repeat after me. It's helpful to say it out loud if you're in a space where you can do that. You might like to bring your palms together at your heart. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes quickly and opportunity is lost. Let us awaken, awaken. I will not squander my life. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes quickly and opportunity is lost. Let us awaken. Awaken. I will not squander my life. Thank you for practicing with us. I'll put the link to this uh, book I was referencing um, down below and also a link for our upcoming New Year's retreat if you happen to uh, see that in time. And uh, I think that's all. Uh, let me just see.
Yeah, I haven't decided yet if I'll teach on the 27th. <laughs> Depends on how prepared I am for the retreat. So I'll be here next week, the 20th, and I'll send you an email either way. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll find a guest teacher. Okay. Wishing you an abundance of golden time. <laughs>